Hello everyone, welcome to the next video on oscillators. In the last video, we had studied about LC oscillators, wherein we studied culprits oscillator, collapse oscillator. Okay. Today we are going to study another LC oscillator that is Hartley's oscillator. Let's have a look at this particular circuit. This is a Hartley oscillator. Okay. Now if you look at this particular circuit and compare with Colpitt's oscillator, you would say that they are the same. Okay. They are almost the same, yes, because in this particular region you can see the this circuit is exactly the same as that of Colpitt's oscillator. Only changes over here in the tanks circuit or your phase shift network. Okay, so what is the Hartley's oscillator about? Okay, it finds its application as a local oscillator in radio receivers, and as I said, it is similar to Colpitt's oscillator circuit. Wherein now we are going to have a look at the phase shift network. Okay, in the phase shift network, there is an inductor which we term as split inductor, which is split into two that is L1 and L2. Okay, and there is capacitor C. Now since split inductor is being used, we have to ground it, right? Just like how we had grounded C1 and C2, okay? Now, we have to ground it, but I cannot ground it directly. So what is used is a capacitor CL, okay? Capacitor CL is used. Now capacitor CL has very good advantage. Whatever is the noise produced in this phase shift network, we don't want it to be given back and that get amplified the noise. So this CL is like a bypass capacitor or we call it a decoupling capacitor which will directly bypass noise to the ground. Fine. Now let's talk about the output. Output of this particular amplifier is given to the tank circuit basically to inductor L1. So output will appear over here and what about L2? L2 is connected back to the base of the transistor via capacitor CC1. Okay. The operation of this particular circuit is similar to that of Colpitt's oscillator circuit. Now, for semester point of view, you cannot write in the exam, if at all Hartley's oscillator comes for the exam and you cannot write that the operation is similar to that of Colpitt's oscillator. Okay. You are supposed to explain the working of this particular oscillator also. It's same, okay. Instead of capacitors, you have inductors, okay. And similarly, you have to explain the construction also in detail with respect to this R1, R2, RE, CE, okay. What is RFC? What is significance of CC1? What is significance of CC2? Okay, this all things you are supposed to explain just like how I have explained in Colpitt's oscillator. Fine. Little bit more in terms of construction and working. Now since we have made use of a split inductor, what has happened is that whenever I say inductor, it creates magnetic energy, it stores magnetic energy, right? So magnetic energy in the form of field lines. So since it's a split inductor, magnetic energy or the magnetic field lines due to one inductor will induce current into the another inductor, okay? And that is known as mutual inductance. So something known as mutual inductance will come into picture now. So I will consider it to be M. So the total inductance which is offered is L1 plus L2 plus 2M. Okay. This you must have studied in fundamentals of electrical engineering. Now the resonant frequency of oscillation is given by this particular formula 1 upon 2 pi root C and this is nothing but L. Okay, this is something which we are going to derive now in mathematical analysis. So let's have a look, have a look at a mathematical analysis. Okay, same thing. This is the generalized circuit or the block diagram I can say of LC oscillator, and this is your Hartley oscillator. Okay, now just have a look. Z1 is connected to the collector. Similarly, over here L1 is connected to the collector. Z2 is connected to the base, so L2 is connected to the base and Z3 is connected between collector and base. So similarly you have a capacitor C which is connected between collector and base. Okay, So it's very clear that Z1 is L1, Z2 is L2 and Z3 is C. So what I'll write Z1 as 
Z1 I'll write it as J omega L1 plus J omega M. This you will have to add because of mutual inductance. Fine. Similarly over here you have Z2 which I can write it as J omega L2 plus J omega M and Z3 I can write it as where is Z3? Z3 I can write it as is similar to C. So I can write it as 1 upon J omega C is equal to 1 upon J is there right. I can bring J on top so it will be minus J upon omega C. Let us start with the derivation. Now to begin with the derivation again from the previous video you are supposed to know this equation okay. This is from LC oscillator okay. Generalized form of LC oscillator that equation I am going to take and what I am supposed to do now is just substitute for Z1, Z2 and Z3 okay. So Z1 I know it is this, Z2 is this and Z3 is this. We have seen this in previous slide also. Just substitute over here. I am doing it term by term HI okay Z1 this is Z1 right then Z2 okay then Z3 this is my first term then there is a plus sign Z1 Z2 so plus sign will have Z1 this is Z1 this is Z2 and this is 1 plus HFE okay again you have a plus sign okay and you have Z2 into Z3 so Z2 is this and Z3 is this minus J upon omega C is equal to 0. I hope this is clear to you all. Nothing to worry. It is not at all complicated. Only thing you have to just substitute. That is it. Fine. Now what is the next step? Next step is to basically arrange this particular terms. Okay. You have to arrange these terms in such a way that you get real part and imaginary part. Okay, that you are supposed to do now. Okay, which we had done it for culprits oscillator also. So it's nothing great. Okay, and after that you should get this term. Please verify this. Okay, this I leave it to y'all. Y'all should get this particular thing after rearranging the term. Please don't write simply rearranging the terms and directly this equation. That won't be tolerated. Okay, you are supposed to solve this particular equation. This equation you are, you are supposed to solve. Get the j terms together. Get the real terms together. And finally, you should arrive at this. Fine. Let me call that equation 1. Now, what is the next step? You have to equate the imaginary part to 0. From that, what you are going to get? You are going to get frequency of oscillation. Okay. And then you are going to equate the real part to 0. From that, you are going to get one condition. Okay. So, we are going to start now. Let us take the imaginary part. This is the imaginary part is equal to 0 directly. This is my imaginary part. So omega into HI is not 0. So I will make this 0. So I will make this 0. What we are supposed to get is something known as omega from this. Okay. So re re rearrange the terms. Solve this. Okay. I took this minus 1 upon omega square C on the other side and then just inverted it. Then get omega square. This is my omega square. So from this I know omega is 2 pi F. Okay, this square is taken on the other side taken as root. Okay, and then I have 2 pi from omega is equal to 2 pi f. Fine, please rearrange you will get this particular equation. Let me call this equation 2. Okay, so one part is done. Coming to the next part, next part is to make real part 0. So this part I should make it 0. So I have considered this particular part and made it 0. Okay, this particular part. Okay, this will anyways go. So this particular part is made zero. Solve this. What I'm supposed to get is beta from this particular part. So if I solve this again, taking the terms, rearranging the terms, finally I should get HFE from this. Again, I am encountering omega square, and from the previous slide, I had got omega square as this, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this particular value over here. Fine. And after that substitution, I'm going to get somewhat this way. Okay. You all can check this. So, what this is 1 plus HFE. So, HFE will be this minus 1. Solve, you will get this. Okay. Please check this. Fine. This is nothing but your beta or HFE. 
again your loop gain should be greater than or equal to uni unity so i'm going to use that particular conditions a beta is is should be greater than equal to 1 so a should be greater than or equal to 1 upon beta which should be greater than or equal to this particular ulta of this particular term fine with this hartley oscillator is done let me move to the next oscillator that is tuned collector oscillator now why it is named so that is very important why this circuit is named as tuned collector oscillator the thing is that at the collector you have a tuned circuit that is the reason it is named as tuned collector oscillator fine okay i just told to you all fine then you have let me have a look at this particular tuned circuit okay this tuned circuit has an inductor as the primary and this is your secondary and you have a capacitor this together is going to decide the frequency of oscillation again you are supposed to explain this r1 r2 and re basically for biasing purpose and c1 and ce for they act like bypass capacitors you all know the significance of bypass capacitor to directly ground ac now where is the output output is over here okay now this output okay should be inductively coupled to the base of this particular transistor okay it's done via l1 okay so the output over here which have oscillations are generated they are directly coupled inductively coupled to the base of this particular transistor but it directly doesn't go over here it will first go at this particular junction okay wherein there is a voltage divider okay so if at all if at all this particular capacitor see what is the significance of capacitor i told you all it acts like a bypass capacitor so if that entire ac is going to be grounded over here fine okay if at all this particular capacitor was not there then what would have happened is that this it would have been given to the base the oscillation generated over here would have been given to the base but not fully okay because the voltage would have got dropped over here because this bypass capacitor is not there right okay so this ac would come across r2 also okay so to avoid that this particular capacitor c1 is used fine this is what i have explained to you all now now the phase shift of 180 degrees provided by this particular transistor and another phase shift is provided by the transformer you know that the transformer provides phase shift of 180 degree so together i have a phase shift of 360 degrees okay which is again satisfies my bachhausen's first criteria which means there is a positive feedback between the input and output voltages input and output voltages let us have a look at the working of this particular circuit now once the construction is done first of all let me put on this particular vcc what will happen is that there will be excitation which is being set up in this particular tank circuit this is lc you will remember while explaining lc how dc was playing the role right the energy was getting transferred over here the energy was getting transferred over here and so on okay so the because of this particular vcc what happens is that the there is flow of collector current over here which will excite this lc tuned circuit okay which will introduce oscillations no doubt and this oscillations will be coupled to the base via l1 okay then whichever is the waveform now appeared at the base it's going to get amplified and going to appear over here okay so when it is going to appear over here it will compensate for some of the losses which have occurred because of the energy transfer from l to c or c to l fine okay this is what i told you all now the turns ratio determines the losses or i can say the losses are determined by the turns ratio turns ratio is something which we know that is l by l1 okay primary upon secondary it defines total losses okay higher the turns ratio lesser is the feedback voltage okay fine so the frequency of oscillation now the frequency of oscillation okay that the frequency at which the bachhausen's criteria is satisfied okay is not the same as that of that of tuned circuit 
over here. Okay, this tuned circuit is generating some oscillations, right? And the frequency of oscillation which we do by calculations, it's not going to match. The reason being that we have used transformer which provides loading effect. Okay, and the frequency of oscillation is given as one upon two pi root L C. Okay, fine. These are some problems for practice. Which are supposed to send it to me. References only one book I have referred for this particular part. Thank you.